everybody. Thanks again for uh, tuning into Border City Rock Talk, where you get the best news and interviews. Before I get to my legendary guest here, I've got some big announcements to make. Uh, first of all, hit the subscribe button. I know, blah, blah, blah. It's that guitar logo, just so that you don't miss any interviews. Uh, coming up in the new year, I've got uh, Elisa Glues White of Arch Enemy. She's a very uh, talented Canadian. Uh, I've got uh, some irons in the in the fire with Mike Reno of Loverboy touring, touring with Sticks and Ario. Uh, King Diamond is confirmed once the album uh, is uh, going to be released. So I've got King Diamond. And I just got, and it's a very good coincidence because my guests will know him, uh, voice of some of the Simpsons characters, uh, Mr. Burns, Principal Skinner, Harry Shearer. Is going to be joining me here on Border City Rock Talk to talk about Spinal Tap. Uh, I'm going to touch on the hell Harry wants to talk about because he's in charge. So, uh, without further ado, I'm going to bring you my guest, uh, Mr. Paul Shortino. How are you doing, Paul? I'm doing amazing. How are you doing? Uh, I'm a million dollars shy of being a millionaire, but I'm okay. Yeah, I hear you there. <laughs> <laughs> so. Uh, we, we all know Paul from uh, his days in Rough Cut, and we'll get into that. Um, you know, I mean, my favorite tune actually was uh, Black Widow, but everybody knows, um, you know, I mean, he got uh, you guys got big on the charts with uh, Peace of My Heart, but legend, a legend in uh, the music scene. Now, uh, here in age, you did that. So, I want to talk about Spinal Tap, and uh, it's kind of funny. Uh, you're you must be a Steel Panther fan, or you know who they are. Oh, yeah, yeah. I know Ralph and the guys, yeah. Yeah, and, and their stage names like Sticks and Inya, and then we have, uh, well, formerly Lexi Fox. But it's interesting. When you were in This Is Spinal Tap, which was great, you came on with uh, Dr. Johnny Fever. Uh, they gave you the name Duke Fame. How did that come <laughs> about? Uh, you got me. It was just in the script. Uh, I... Um... Not not too long ago, actually, Harry Shearer, you were mentioning him. Um, Billy Huffy from uh, Dino, Desi, and Billy. Yep. And uh, also uh, uh, Paul Schaefer had a show here in Vegas. So yeah, we, yeah. Did, we, did, uh, we did a Spinal Tap tune. We did Big Bottoms. So Girls got them. And uh, we all did a bass solo. And lo and behold... Spinal Tap has followed me around since I've done it. I was playing an acoustic Taylor bass. Everybody else was electrified bass. Yeah. And I was supposed to do my solo, and my bass went out, and they put a mic up to the F phone, and I was playing my solo through the hole in the, the Taylor bass. So uh, it's kind of followed me around all my life, Spinal Tap. That's pretty <laughs> cool that you brought up Paul Schaefer because he's a fellow Canadian. He's a fellow Canuck. Yeah. <laughs> so how did you yeah. how did you get involved with that? How did they approach you? Um, bring me back that uh, to that uh, time when you were asked to uh, be a part of that movie. Well, how it came about was uh, Rough Cut was playing the Troubadour. So at that time, Wendy Dio uh, was managing the band. Ronnie Dio was doing some uh, pre-production with the band uh, in uh, my folk studio, which was Fiddlers at the time, and also Sound City. And uh, so we were playing the Troubadour. She put an ad out in the paper. Uh, one of the local magazines, I'm not sure which one it was. It might have been BAM. There were quite a few back in the 80s yeah. uh, that were local, uh, you know, papers about what was going on and wh who was playing what club right. and what band was playing where. And so to make a long story endless, uh, <laughs> um, I guess somebody in the cast casting department of Spinal Tap saw our picture in one of these magazines. So came to the Troubadour and uh, saw me. I was in my white leather. That was my own outfit and the boots, knee-high black suede boots. Yeah. I was performing in that. And they actually asked myself, David Alford and Jake, Jakey e. Lee was in the band at the time before he had uh, 
moved on to Ozzy. Yeah. And uh, so we were all called to this casting call. Well, I just so happened to show up first. <laughs> oh, nice. And I, I was dressed the way I was dressed uh, at the performance. So uh, wardrobe saw me show up and they went, there's Duke fame. We, 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 we don't even have to dress him. He's already dressed. So uh, I, I walked in, spoke to Rob Reiner. I think we were at a, a Norm's or a Denny's, one of the two, on Sherman Way in Lancashire in California. And um, so I went in, met Rob Reiner, and talked to some of the other people that were involved. And uh, automatically got a call immediately after that saying that we've got Duke fame. And uh, so, lo and behold, I uh, I uh, showed up at the Holiday Inn the day of the shooting, yeah. and uh, Rough Cut hadn't been signed yet. We were still shopping a deal, wow. and uh, the girl that I was with was actually dating Jackson Brown, and he wow. she was with him for quite a while, and. Uh, here, her and Wendy Dio, you know, she was with a rock star, Jackson Brown, and yeah. Ronnie James Dio, uh, a rock star. Oh, yeah. And here I'm I'm playing a, a, a rock star and not a rock star. <laughs> <laughs> Don't sell yourself short. Uh, and uh, did it was all ad lib. And yeah. I'm sitting there and I'm talking to the to Wendy and this lady, and uh, I don't even remember her name. And uh, I'm just going, you know, these guys are having a bad hair day. Well, I didn't know they were wearing wigs. So <laughs> before I, I did my shoot, um, we took lunch. And uh, we're sitting, I'm sitting right next to Rob Reiner, and I'm trying to, you know, get some rough cut songs in the movie. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and he's going, uh, no, we have all the music we need. We've got songs like Big Bottom, My Girl's Got Them. And... Arm. And, and and on and on and on with the, some of the material. And I'm I'm sitting right across the cast, you know. Yeah. Uh, Harry Shear, I'm sitting across uh, Michael McKeon, uh, Christopher Guest, and the drummer in that time was Rick Parnell. Yeah. Uh, and uh, I'm going, you know, you guys look like the guys that are having a bad hair day. And they all started laughing, you know, because uh, <laughs> <laughs> they were the actors. Yeah. Um, you know, it was uh, it was quite an experience. I had been on uh, previously. I uh, put out a record, oh, in the 70s. I think it was 1971, maybe. Uh, and uh, it was on a label called Bell. And the producer was uh, Snuff Garrett, who did Liza Minnelli, also Sonny and Cher. Wow. And so um, I was signed with this label, Bell Records. And... Um, Hadn't done anything, and it was 22 with a bullet on uh, Billboard. And uh, lo and behold, uh, Vicki Lawrence from the Carol Burnett show oh, came yeah. out with a song called That's the Night That the Lights Went Out in Georgia. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, and so my record just got kicked right off of the uh, charts, ah. shelved, and they put all of their, you know, oomph behind them so i hadn't done anything for a long time and uh and then um got involved with the dos and uh we did some demos and stuff and eventually got signed but uh it was quite a crazy doing this movie that uh i never thought you know would get so much uh uh oh i i, I guess it's 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 given me so many blessings in the in the in the in the past, yeah. after the movie, we were on tour with uh, Crocus and Accept, and yeah. we couldn't get a we couldn't get a line check or anything. We just had it was a three bill uh, show, so we were right up against the monitors. Accept didn't tear down, so we had to put our stuff in front of their stuff, and then Crocus was headlining. Well, yeah. the movie Spinal Tap was showing. Uh, and all of the Holiday Inns and the Howard Johnsons when they had them back then. Yeah. And a lot of people had the movie on the bus. So the road manager happened to walk by our, uh, our dressing room and uh, asked me if I was Duke Fame. <laughs> and I said, uh, 
uh, yeah, I am Duke fame. I am the guy. And they oh. said, well, the guys in Crocus would really love to meet you. So, uh, That's so cool. I, I went back and, you know, I was signing autographs as Duke fame um, <laughs> <laughs> to Mark Sirachi and the rest of the guys. Uh, it was quite, quite. And then we got a sound. We got actually a line check after that, that point on. Yeah. And uh, eventually went out on the road just with Accept on a oh. Western uh, uh, leg tour on the west coast so uh wow. yeah spinal tap was quite a quite an interesting thing and i had uh when i did that first record on bell records uh i was on the dating game with jim lang uh i also was on uh, uh the gong show twice the gong show yes the gong show twice and um <laughs> this was before i you know uh, I got signed to Warner Brothers with Rough Cut, but uh, yeah, they were pushing the record uh, and getting me on, you know, shows that I needed to be on so people would know who I was. But uh, it was a lot, a lot of fun, a lot, a lot of, a lot, a lot of good times back then. Did you, uh, did you and um, David ever um, hash it out and um, come to an understanding after he called you uh, and your band Wankers? <laughs> <laughs> well you know what what was interesting about that i had no idea what they were going to say yeah because so it, i didn't it was, everything was all ad lib even all of the stuff that uh howard hessman said about the normo dome yeah. you know we got <laughs> we got to go wait in the lobby now uh for the limo uh and then i walk away and they go oh yeah they were booing him when we went on you know, and um, I didn't know any of that stuff that they said. So uh, I yeah. just kind of, you know, just played, played uh, stupid, pretty much. <laughs> uh, well, I found that very out. intimidated from the cameras. That's not my trip. Well, there were so many people that came out of that movie that went on to be successes. Like you've got Billy Crystal, Dana Carvey, um, Fran Mark, Drescher, Fran Drescher. Um, yeah, Paul, Paul Benedict. Was, pardon me? Paul Benedict, uh, who Paul was Benedict. on the Jefferson. Yeah, 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 yeah. Ed Begley Jr. Yep. And um, I had interviewed Harry a couple years ago. It was kind of, we had a confusing interview. Um, but what he said when I asked him about that, if there was mm -hmm. rehearsal or all that, he said it was all called impro improv. Yep. They had a theme yeah. and they went in there. So that just shows the talent of these guys. Oh, absolutely. And you know what? It shows the uh, uh, the talent of not having a script, of just having yeah. an idea, of just having an idea, yeah. and let, letting letting people run with their idea of how that person should act. You know, and the thing is, it was so because it's a, it's it's impro improvisation. It means there's no subconscious rehearsing to a line, so. I watched the movie a couple times thinking they're a real actual band. I was at the record store looking for the album. I was in Circus Magazine looking for a freaking tour. Oh, well, you know, what's interesting is, is shortly after that movie, mm. uh, and then Rough Cut got signed, we did Hearing Aid. Yeah. With, yeah. with uh, you know, it was uh, the heavy metal version yeah. of We Are the World. Stars. And uh, Exactly. And they... Um, they showed up there, you know, and it was good That's to see right. them. Yeah, they were they did some of the interviews, you know. Ingve J. Malmstein, you know, like yeah. all the other Ingve J. Malmsteins that are playing here today. <laughs> I mean <laughs> those, those guys are brilliant. I mean, what comes off the top of their head is just, yeah. you know, it's amazing. And well, yeah. that's why they're they're really good comedians and that's actors. Good. Let's get on to what you're doing because you you've been uh, you've been nonstop in your career. Um, I I uh, spoke with Carlos a couple of years ago and you were doing Rough Riot, um, and I mean, obviously your Rough Cut uh, history is still uh, still selling and um, you're known for that I think primarily. But you're also in King Cobra, and you yeah, got and I did a couple did a couple of records with Quiet Riot. Yeah, that's right. That's right. 
You know, in fact, uh, we've got a rough cut record right here with Carlos on there as well as a, as a guest appearance. Everybody, and he's actually in in the new choir. He's in the new King Cobra as well. That's right. So you guys are recording uh, as we speak the, a new album. Uh, tell us about that, and tell us uh, when we can expect to uh, be able to purchase it. Uh, it'll probably be out in uh, late April, May. Okay. Uh, we're finishing it up. Uh, we're finishing up on it right now. Um, Rowan Robertson's one of the guitar players as well, who was yeah. with Dio, and uh, and then there's Carlos, myself, Johnny Rod, and Carmine, yeah. and pretty much um, everything's been coming to my studio, okay. <laughs> and uh, where they're bringing the ideas to me or the songs to me, and then I've got to come up with the melodies and lyrics or the titles of the songs. Titles keep changing. Yeah. Uh, in fact, Carmine just sent me a song that <laughs> it, uh, it's uh, it's an awesome song uh, that Carlos wrote, and uh, and then I uh, put some stuff to it. It's called "Dance in the Wind," and the album's called "Music as a Piece of Art." And um, it's going to actually we're doing a, a CD and a, a vinyl, I believe, oh, nice. because the uh, artwork is so amazing on it, yeah. and. Um, now, all the songs are related to music, you know, like music is a piece of art uh, in my ears, straight to my heart. It, uh, yeah. you know, music is, you know, is always my best friend. Uh, it's always been there when no one else was. And that's that's the title track song. And it's pretty much some of those are the lyrics where people all everybody kind of can relate to those things where he uh, did a remake of. Uh, uh, Love Hurts. Oh, Nazareth. Yes. And uh, also, we might be throwing on their Catch a Rainbow uh, nice. acoustic version. Uh, but uh, it the record's amazing. It's going to be a great record. Carlos is, uh, this is the first thing he's done in a while, actually, as far as recording goes. Right, right. And uh, people are going to be shocked uh, on how good the music is. Oh, and no, no. the songs, the songs are, it's really all about the songs, you know, when you write really good songs and that's a hard thing for me to do. I've, I've you know, I'm never considered myself a great songwriter like Paul Williams or, you know, there's some really guys out there that can't sing. Yeah. <laughs> Neil Young is another one. <laughs> he, you know, the guy writes amazing songs, but, you know, yeah. he's sings sharp. <laughs> God bless him. But, you know, uh, that's one thing we've been focusing a lot on. And it's just taken us a long time because of how the world is yeah. today. And so having to record in different states, people having to send, you know, the material to me and then me send it back. And it's, it's, it's been quite an experience. And, uh, Thank God for technology because it would be a really uh, it would be pretty close to being impossible to yeah. track in a studio unless everybody was tested, everybody was you know vaccinated or whatever you know. And the flu shot is what I call it because you got to yeah. keep get got to keep getting it. <laughs> yeah, I know, I know. It's uh, it's crazy here in Canada. They're uh, oh. throwing the booster at us, and I don't know. Um, oh. Do you, I, I assume you miss being in the studio with some, uh, with um, the band or, or so, some of the people have well, been, said they don't. Uh, they I kind of miss that feeling, just, you know, the camaraderie part yeah, of it. Yeah. Um, actually, the way we're writing is, is, is better than the old way how people wrote. Got in a room, they started, you know, collectively working on an idea. Yeah. And, so, you know, sometimes the idea gets lost because there's so many chefs yeah. in the stew, yeah. you know? Uh, this way, you know, people send an idea. Um, if they have a melody, they'll send a melody along with the idea. And then I have to, you know, put put some lyrics to it. Yeah. Uh, some of this stuff I've had to put mu uh, lyrics and melody to. And by having a studio, <coughs> excuse me, by having a studio, it's um, it helps you perfect your art too because uh, it's yeah. helped me find my voice. Right. Uh, 
because when I first got in Rough Cut, Ronnie was doing a lot of uh, pre-production and working with Rough Cut. Yeah. And um, I found myself sounding like Ronnie or just, you know, trying to, when you got somebody that sings like that on the other side of it, first of all, having somebody, a great singer like that produce you, yeah. you know, is, is, is an honor in itself because most producers don't sing. When yeah. I did the Quiet Riot record, um, Spencer would be on the other side going, okay, I want you to sing. You know, yeah. Yeah. and I'd have to come up with closer, closer, come a little closer to girls like, <laughs> or boys like me don't bite, you know? Yeah. But, uh, you know, to, he was a great producer. Um, yeah. He brought some really great things out of me. But yeah. working with another singer uh, like Ronnie, I found myself, unconsciously trying to emulate what he was telling me to sing. Probably intended a bit. It did yeah, that and also would sing something to me and I would end up singing it back to him similar. So yeah. I was having a hard time finding who Paul Shortino was because when Rough Cut got together at that point in time and Ronnie was doing work with us, I was in a you know, I was in a cover band. So yeah. I was singing like Steve Perry or Lou Graham, yeah. you know, or trying to, let's, let's put it that way. Yeah. And uh, he helped me actually find who I really was. Yeah. And uh, so that's one reason, actually, I really wish he would have done the first Rough Cut album. Mm -hmm. And I think Wendy wanted to get an outside producer because of that reason right. uh, uh, that I was sounding a little bit too much like uh, we did a a song that was on um uh, uh, uh the best unsigned bands klos right. was a record that they put out and we did a song called try a little harder and it was kind of like a dio song right. dun, 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 yeah. and uh, how many roads must i travel <laughs> i found myself <laughs> You know, hey, I'm trying to sound like Ronnie, you yeah. know, and because uh, Ronnie had all different shades of his voice. He could sing very pretty. Yeah. He could sing really hard. Yeah. And uh, so, yeah, it was uh, it was an honor working with him. And I think if Rough Cut would have did the record with Ronnie and Angelo, which recently I found out that they really wanted to, to do from Angelo or Curry. Uh, the record would have come out a year earlier, yeah. which I think it would have been timing wise better for Rough Cut because we came out uh, the year that Tippo Gore or Tipper Gore oh, yeah. came out with all those stickers yeah. of how bad heavy metal was. Yeah. And uh, the cover wasn't even close to what was inside the record. I think the heaviest song. Uh, was Black Widow on that record. And, you guys and Dreaming that? Again, Dreaming Again was the one that got us signed. So the three, my three favorite songs on that album was Taker, uh, Black Widow, yeah. um, Dreaming Again. Yeah. And um, those were my favorite songs off of there. And then P the Peace of My Heart thing, that was just, uh, that was just a random idea. Nice. You know, for a cover song by putting Wild Thing, yeah, piece of my heart, pretty much is what yeah. we did. No, that was a great album. Uh, what else, what else do you have going on? So, you're living in Vegas, not Cali? Yes, I'm living in Las Vegas okay. and I've been here for 15 years. My wife's uh grandfather was an architect for Bugsy Siegel, so her family's oh. been here, been here since the 40s, oh, wow. and uh, he did the uh. Flamingo, and then yeah. also uh, did a lot of other things. The Mint. Um, he wasn't involved in the mob. He was just an architect that finished the Flamingo. And uh, okay. so I kidnapped her for 16 years in California. <laughs> and we've been back here six, uh, well, it's going on 16 years. We're going on 31 years of marriage. Well, congratulations, so, uh, man. Yeah, yeah, that's tough in our business, you know, uh, to to stick with. So, this is my second marriage. My first, uh, I have a son that's forty four, and uh, 
he sings really good too, but he, that's not his forte. He's a, uh, he does estimates for uh, insurance companies for damages in houses. And oh, nice. he's, yeah, he's pretty much a contractor. He okay. can build a house, you know? Yeah. And I can't build a box, but I can. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I'll tell you, I, I, I can't draw a straight line with a ruler. So yeah, I hear you. I hear you. So I've been, uh, I did a record also with, um, it's called Blue Dahlia. It's, yep. uh, we did that with Tracy G. Uh, also released on DDR Music Group. Okay. And um, <clears throat> also um, released a Bad Boys, the best, a Bad Boys uh, CD just recently okay. on their uh, label. And that's about 30. That started, we started recording that record right after uh, I left Quiet Riot. Okay. And uh, so it's probably about uh, 34 years old, somewhere around there. And what's really interesting is it was released in Japan, but I found three bonus tracks in a DAT player that had been in my garage wow. for, it's been sitting in Las Vegas garage for 15 years in the heat. Wow. We put new carpet in and I moved all my file cabinets in the garage and you got to keep taped in a, cool. uh, an wow. area that's a, that's a constant uh, temperature and uh, being 110 or whatever in the garage, yeah. um, all these other DAT tapes that I had in there, I had tons of DAT tapes. They all went bad, but the only tape that was any good was the one that was in the DAT player and it had King of Thieves, No No Nicky, and there was one other song uh, on there now that I thinking about it and I can't remember which one it was but um there were three songs on there that were bonus tracks on this album and uh it seems to be doing quite well you know yeah yeah and that's with Mitch Perry on there who was with the Michael Shanker band Michael Guy who had wrote a lot of the material uh eventually joined House of Lords from Bad Boys yeah but and then uh, Rich Carlson. And then there's one track on there that James Kodak played on. And if the th- record ever makes, uh, <laughs> if few people go out and buy this album, uh, then, then I'll be able to share the profits with all the guys in the, uh, <laughs> uh, <clears throat> in, that were involved. Nice. But initially it was my solo project when I left uh, Quiet Riot. <clears throat> and how that all went about was, Frankie's mother got very sick, so he ended up going out with Wasp. Yeah. And uh, the record that I did with them, that uh, we did, we canceled all the tours. And then my mother shortly got ill after that with a heart attack. So uh, just kind of uh, started forming another band called Bad Boys. And uh, and the Carlo wasn't involved in it, uh, Carlos, but uh, it was, uh, was Michael Guy originally and Sean McNabb. Yeah, and uh, James Kodak was the yeah. first lineup, and then I did a couple records with Jeff Northrup, J.K. Northrup, yeah. who uh, actually was in King Cobra at one time with uh, Johnny Edwards, who uh, also uh, was in Foreigner. Right, right, that's right. Uh, yeah, he did. He did one record with Foreigner, which was uh, it's just a great record. Johnny Edwards, a great singer, nice. and so um, so you know, I'm just. Uh, just busy, rocking busy, away. Busy. We, uh, I did a record just before uh, it closed down called Shortino Make a Wish. Okay. Doug Aldridge is on that album. Uh, Jay Shellen, who is now with Yes. Um, <clears throat> oh, there's a lot of people on that. Phil Susan, um, who was with Ozzy. Um, yeah, yeah. And then we did a, a video. Uh, Vinnie Paul played the drums on Send in the Clowns. We did a video of Send in the Clowns about 13 years ago. And uh, it was with Ira Black, who was with Metal Church and a few other bands. And uh, he came up with the arrangement. We recorded it. Vinnie uh, Paul Abbott showed up in clown outfits. He was about an hour late. Oh, and he okay. brought his whole posse, went and bought about $3,000 worth of clown outfits, no way. showed up, played the drums. And he told me, he says, you know, 
I've got the opening line for the drums. I'm going, what? And he's, he goes, it, it's like, and then I go into, ah, and a scream. And I go, Vinny, but there's more to the song than that, you know? Yeah. Because he heard Judy Collins' version. Oh, and he okay. goes, how are we going to do this for Carrot Top? Because it was initially <laughs> for Carrot Top, and we were trying to do something like, you know, everybody did with Sam Kennison. Yeah, 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 yeah. On Wild Thing, we were, you know, going to bring other people in. And then it kind of just fell to the wayside. He had it in the show for a while. So about uh, 13 years later, mm -hmm. I'm doing this. I go to Japan. My wife hooks me up to do this Q&A. Uh, and actually, the only other person that did that, this particular Q&A concert, was the first drummer in Iron Maiden. Oh, wow. And yeah, so uh, this was in Nagoya, uh, uh, Nagoya, and um, 5,000 seater. They put the band together, and the band played everything from Rough Cut, Quiet Riot, J, uh, JK Northrup, um, the Back on Track album, mm -hmm. some other stuff that I had did. I did a, a record in G uh, Germany. Um, and uh, it was a solo record called It's About Time. Right. And uh, we took a track off of there. And so the band had collectively put together stuff that I had did through, you know, my, my musical history. And uh, it was a great turnout. And then they asked me to come back again. And uh, I did a small tour of Tokyo, Nagoya, Osaka, uh, and the major yeah. places to play and stuff. Mm -hmm. And uh, I hadn't been back there in 27 years. So the one of the guitar players, uh, Nozumo Waki, um, had did a record, and he had uh, Marco Mendoza on it. Um, Peter Bolts from uh, Accept. Yeah. So he brought those people to the table on the short Tino Make a Wish album, and we did a video with uh, the this gentleman Gary Arona, mm -hmm. who uh, did a lot of stuff for HBO, Showtime, Cinemax, and his wife is uh, Tabitha Stevens, mm -hmm. who uh, uh, eventually was in the uh, Hall of Fame of Porn. Uh, oh, nice. <laughs> and, but she's uh, she's one she's a female clown in the uh, and it's on YouTube. Okay. Uh, it turned out really good. It's uh, Carrot Tops in it. It's mainly based around him and me and the guitar player in it. Okay. Uh, our faces are, pa are, are painted up. Half of his face is painted up, and then I'm painted like a mime. And okay. uh, Carrot Top did his own, own makeup, so he's a scary clown. Oh, yeah. And Tabitha is a sexy clown. Yeah. And then we did another uh, song off the album called Make a Wish. And it, uh, there's a, uh, a guy here in Las Vegas, Murray Salchuk, who was on America's Got Talent. Oh, okay. uh, him, him and his lady, uh, he took, uh, it was a ballad, and he took some of the lyrics from the ballad and did some magical tricks to it, oh, uh, really? which was kind of cool. So you, you see the video in uh, black or in color, and when they're sh doing their part because they're i just married them i'm also a minister i just i just married them and uh my it was my wife's idea of getting murray and danny to do it as a couple right. because you could see the love it's a love song you could see the love yeah, within yeah. their eyes you know oh, and, nice. and, and uh, they did a great job and he did some really amazing just you know close close at hand kind of magic you know mm -hmm. you know and uh to kind of coincide with the song the videos look like they're hundred thousand dollar videos i mean they're just you know they're they're back in the time of mtv you know mm -hmm. uh where people you know spent some money on videos yeah. and um uh, and it's kind of like i uh asked some of the guys um uh, a guy named sean perkins uh to um, do the lighting, who does all the lighting for all the Cirque shows here in Las Vegas. 
Right. So the the show, the actual videos have a little bit of a Cirque uh, vibe to them. Oh, and it's kind of cool. Yeah. So other than that, I've just been trying to keep busy. You know, uh, yeah. we're going to tour this King Cobra record. Carmine wants to get out. That. I was going to ask you about that. So definitely uh, uh, we're looking forward to the King Cobra tour and the album coming out. Um, I know you have other interviews coming up, but before I let you go, favorite Canadian musician uh, or singer or band and uh, yeah. You know, that's a tough one because there's some really good ones. I, I would start out with uh, uh, Brian Adams. Nice. Yeah. Um, Mike Reno from Loverboy. Yeah, coming you up. You know, uh, Helix. Helix, yeah, for sure. Brian Vollmer. Yeah, yeah we uh, we did some shows with them. Rough Cut yeah. did. Actually, um, before Triumph. I forget, Triumph is one of my, you know what? Everybody um, is is between Rush and Triumph, anybody I ask. And uh, speaking of that, I almost forgot. I've got Irons in the Coal for um, Alex Lifeson in the new year. They've got a new project called Envy of None with uh, Andy Curran of Coney Hatch. And um, there's another uh, band, Coney Hatch. Yeah. 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 Hey, Operator, Devil's Death. Yeah. So, uh, hey, I'd like to thank you. If you Was were... Hollywood Sweet uh, a Canadian band? Honeymoon Sweet. Honeymoon suite. They they sure are. Yeah. Um, yeah, gotta... because we had the producer come in who actually produced their album um, to come in before Jack Douglas ended up doing the second Rough Cut album. Yeah. yeah and I uh, got he came in uh, Los Angeles uh, where we were rehearsing, and they fuck they were a great band too. They you guys got a lot of great bands out of uh, you know of course Rush, but I never was a. Uh, you know, um, musically, I'm a big fan of theirs. I, I'm a vocalist, so yeah, yeah, for Getty, sure. Getty, Getty, Getty sounds a little, you know, munchkin-y to me. He's got, you know? he's got a, he's got a, unique he's got a very voice. unique vocal. You know, yeah. Once you hear his voice, you know it's him. Yeah. But a lot of singers, you know, they 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 do have their own <clears throat> characteristics, and you can identify a band usually by the singer. Unless it's Van Halen, right? Well, Ozzy. Well, look at Ozzy. Yeah, oh, yeah. Ozzy. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> Ozzy. Ozzy. Yep. Yeah, those are some of my favorite uh, bands. But, you know, I mean, Brian Adams, I mean, great songwriter. Yeah. Great tone in his voice. Yeah. You know, so he would have been my, uh, Mike Reno, you know, those, the, everybody I mentioned, I'm real big fans of. So, you Thanks know. Well, we're a big fan of yours, Paul, and, uh, Duke, <laughs> um, I appreciate your time, my friend, and uh, I wish you nothing but the best. And um, I might send you an email, try to get a contact for Mr. Paul Schaefer. I've been chasing that cat for a while, and he's a Canadian. There's no reason for him to run for me. I'll send you his a uh, assistance number. That would be super, my friend. So what I'll do is I'm going to leave links for uh, the, um, all of your uh, material and how to get a hold of you and your Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and all that stuff so everybody can catch up on you. And um, in the meantime, be safe and keep rocking. And, and God bless you, my brother. Thank you so much. I'm sorry I was a little late this morning. <laughs> That's okay. We're even. I, I, I burnt the first interview, so we're even. Uh, well, I hope everything's okay with everything. Everything's great, on. man. We're awesome. Good. Awesome. Well, God bless you. And I know you'll be all right and safe. This, yeah. all of this stuff, this too all should pass soon. As my wife says all the time, this too shall pass. This too shall so, pass. Merry, Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas to you and a happy new year. Okay, Peace. Buddy. Love it out. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye.